We now move to instructional design models with a focus on content. These models were developed uh, in the last decades of the 20th century. Uh, I based this unit on a paper written by Richard Meyer, Teaching of Subject Matter in the Annual Review of Psychology in 2004. It's a very nice paper worth reading if you're interested. Uh, it gives a very good overview. Well, the, the, the idea basic of Richard Meyer is a sort of two-step argument. First, some general commands and then focusing on specific domains. The general commands have to do with this general statement that uh, learning psychology or the psychology of learning and teaching gradually moved from trying to, um, to um, uh, discover, let's say, general laws of learning uh, from that attempt to a more domain-specific approach, trying to find out what uh, domain-specific uh, subject matter areas have as specific characteristics which you should take into account whenever you want to study learning and you want to design uh, instruction. Uh, psychologists tend to have the idea that, well, I, I'm, I'm talking now of, of, of the behaviorists and also of people working in the domain or from the cognitive perspective. Well, they had the idea that they could discover the general laws of learning because these laws were, let's say, determined by the way the human information processing system works or perhaps well, the, the, the way evolution developed and gradually, uh, let's say, made available specific learning mechanisms. Um, so the, the, these, 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 in, the, in those days, the days of behaviorism and cognitivism, uh, scholars were uh, focusing on these general unifying laws. Now, gradually, uh, they started to discover that uh, that was a, a fruitless attempt. Uh, just focusing on the issue of learning and, and, and teaching, behaviorism um, uh, emphasized uh, low road transfer, whereas cognitivism also made, let's say, room for high road transfer. This was the learning triangle we've, we discussed earlier, based on the work by uh, Salomon and Perkins, uh, where, you, where you can try to generalize from concrete experience to concrete experience, and in that way, gradually extend you know, the generalizability of the skills you have uh, and the knowledge you have acquired. That's the low road transfer line. Uh, and the high road transfer line is, is the, the way uh, as it is depicted here by building uh, mental models, schemata, and uh, in, in the end, abstract knowledge, abstract principles, strategies, which bridge, so to speak, one concrete experience uh, and, the, and another concrete experience, which makes transfer uh, available. But th these are still uh, generalized ideas uh, which hold for each and every domain. Uh, there was no specific uh, interest in, in, in the 70s and the 80s in, in, in domain domains, uh, the characteristics of uh, subject matter domains. That, that, uh, that focus was part of, I think, the, the constructivist approach in which the idea uh, arose that uh, transfer is possible, high road transfer is possible of domain-specific declarative and procedural knowledge and you have to develop these triangles uh, for each and every domain. For instance, for the domain of reading, for the domain of arithmetic, for the domain of science, for the domain of mathematics. And these happen to be the four domains which have been addressed in the paper by Richard Meyer teaching subject matter. So uh, Meyer's idea is that each and every domain has its specific characteristics and you have to analyze these specific characteristics in order to be able to arrange learning environments or to design an instructional uh, sequence which helps students to, to acquire knowledge and skills in these particular domains. So the first step is always start with a task analysis. Start with studying the domain and focusing on specific, on 
specific subject or, the, or, 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 or a series of subjects which you want to be the central part of your instructional uh, sequence or your lesson series or whatever. And, and then uh, uh, zoom in on these uh, subjects and try to find out what these subjects entail. So apply a cognitive task analysis in order to figure out what the task is about and how you should, should teach uh, children or adults to, to master a particular task. It's also a bit like, you know, the famous uh, Seymour Peppert said um, when he uh, worked on, on the uh, programming language Logo um, a long time ago, uh, before the, t the turning of the century. Um, and Peppert also emphasized that studying a particular domain is, is, is an absolute necessary precondition in order to be able to teach uh, that domain. Um, and he, he, he compared that to uh, learning to ski or other areas where, where a, a thorough study of the skills necessary and even the movements which form a particular ski movement is necessary in order to be able to explain to beginning skiers how to uh, ad uh, develop a particular movement. Okay, so domain-specific learning theories, domain-specific instructional design content based or content-oriented instructional design. Let's uh, study one particular example of this approach. You can imagine that there is not a general uh, theory here which dictates how to organize your instruction because the, the point of the, the, the matter is that these theories have to be develop, developed in each and every domain. But we can uh, 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 study one particular example, creative writing. Um, again, start with the task analysis and then design your instruction accordingly. Well, uh, creative writing um, has already been studied a long time ago. This is the model by Flower and Hayes in 1981 in which uh, three important stages are distinguished when you are writing a paper. Planning, translating and reviewing. Planning is everything which you do uh, before you actually uh, 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 write. Um, that is, you organize, you collect your ideas, you study the writing, the, 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 the writing assignment, for instance, the task environment, uh, you uh, uh, try to find uh, the necessary information in your long-term memory, in your knowledge of the topic and, 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 and what you know about people who are going to read your paper, uh, writing plans, writing skills, etc., etc. So uh, you, you collect all kinds of information which uh, is necessary to actually organize ideas and, and uh, and uh, 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 let's say define the goals you want to achieve with the paper you're going to write. So this is everything which goes on before the actual writing. So whenever you have these ideas more or less organized or putting in a sort of you know outline or a, co or a concept map or whatever uh, medium you use, then you have to gradually translate uh, these ideas into a, a sequential uh, uh, paper in which you start with the first and then you uh, just follow up. So the, 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 the translation from this, you know, concept map kind of structure uh, to the linear structure of a paper is always a very, very, very hard task to do. Um, and then after that, you, 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 you start to review and to edit and revise your paper, which is also a very important step. Now, um, and in which you use also external storage and, and other resources available. So this, this, uh, this model has been developed um, in, in, in 1981 by Flower and Hayes. And you can imagine that you use that model um, to, to design a writing course. And then you may start with, you know, informing your students what writing is about and then gradually help them to develop uh, strategies which uh, are uh, useful for planning, which are useful for the translation phase and which are useful for the reviewing uh, phase. And so, so gradually help them to build this skill of creative writing. 
You might also start with their own experiences and, and help them to analyze what they actually are doing um, with the help of this model, of this task analysis, and then gradually make them aware of, let's say, things they might improve or things they might uh, that might be better uh, connected in, in their writing activity, etc., etc., or they receive more attention, etc. So anyway, um, uh, gradually you, you help students to build up their writing skills and you use this task analysis definitely as the point of departure for your instructional sequence. So this is one example, I think, of an approach in which you uh, use the domain, uh, the content, as the basis of designing your uh, instructional uh, sequence of activities. And the task analysis is the point of departure. Without such a task analysis, nothing can be done. And I think that is the basic characteristic of uh, instructional design models with a focus on content.